When did standing up for women and their hard-won sex-based rights make you a bad person? The moral compass of the West is now so topsy-turvy by defending the idea of female-only spaces, apparently you're a bigot. So why does all of this matter? Well, because I'm afraid that men have always been and always will be a predatorial threat to women. Men are physically stronger and can overpower most women. And the vast majority of sexual violence suffered by women is at the hands of men. So to give men calling themselves female unfettered access to women's changing rooms, women's toilets and even women's refuge centres and rape crisis shelters is patently an outright assault on women's safety. When did standing up for women's rights make you a bad person? As a son to an amazing mother, as a brother to amazing sisters, with amazing female friends and brilliant female colleagues, it's something that I will do until my dying day. If only more men could do just the same. Like, for example, the cervix-free leader of the opposition, Keir Starmer, who gets tongue-tied in interviews just trying to define what a woman is, even though... He's married to one. He's been very quiet recently as one of his own MPs attacked a female member of parliament simply for the crime of bravely telling her story of when she felt threatened by a man in a previously female-only space. Here is what Miriam Cates, MP, had to say, and let me warn you, it's powerful stuff. There are areas where only women allow, are allowed. I had an experience recently in a restaurant where uh, a man dressed as a woman walked into the toilets. I was on my own in the toilets. He stood behind me and stared at me into the mirror, looking at me in my eyes. Now, I have no idea if he intended me any harm. But, but, but my instinct, my evolved instinct as a woman was to be frightened because unlike almost any other species, women are far less powerful than men. We can't defend ourselves. That's why we have... No, it's a fact. The difference in strength between men and women is phenomenal. That's why we have separate sex uh, categories for sport. Can you imagine how she felt being stared out by that man in the bathroom? And what was her reward for that brave and principled speech? Well, she was yelled at by a bloke. How unsurprising. Labour MP Lloyd Russell Moyle, who we're told spent the afternoon heckling anyone that he disagreed with. And on this occasion, in relation to uh, the particular MP you've just heard, he absolutely let rip was probably one of the worst transphobic dog whistle speeches that I've heard in an awful long time. The idea of linking trans people with predators, frankly, is disgusting and you should be ashamed. How on earth is her story in any sense dog whistle politics? He then went across the chamber and sat on the Tory benches. Now, was that to intimidate her or make her feel uncomfortable? You tell me. Do Labour have a problem with women? Labour MP Rosie Duffield, who spoke to me on this programme last weekend, seems to think so. Here's what she wrote this week in an article following that MP's angry behaviour. She wrote, after Tuesday's outburst came the silence, not from Russell Moyle, but from Keir Starmer's office. It's a cycle I've come to know well. First, speak up in defence of women's sex-based rights and then face the consequences alone. She goes on, in 2019, it was hard enough trying to convince my constituents that Labour wasn't anti-Semitic. In the next election, when they inevitably ask whether Labour is sexist, I'm not sure I'll be able to do the same. Now, Lloyd at Russell Moyle has apologised for his behaviour and he is clearly deeply concerned about the rights of trans people who are some of the most abused and prejudged members of our society. I have close friends who have transitioned and they need support and love as well as rights and recognition. And he's right that you cannot conflate a trans person with being a sex attacker. Of course not. But in the end, his own aggressive behaviour is typical of so many pushing this so-called trans ideology, which denies the very principle of biological sex altogether. 
an ideology that wants biological men competing in female sport, that wants biological men fully intact in women's prisons, and that wants male paedophiles to be referred to in the press as females that have abused children. Now, that is a libel on all women and a lie to boot. Attacking and erasing women isn't just a byproduct of this new religion. It's the deliberate outcome of it. Women are being cancelled by design. And the way that this policy is being pursued has violent and threatening undertones. After all, why does gender critical author J.K. Rowling now require 24-7 security? It just demonstrates how regressive and medieval woke culture is that figures, for example, from the Scottish National Party pushing this crazy ideology are happy to march on the streets alongside placards threatening to behead women. Decapitate women that won't fall into line. That's progress, is it? Women have faced oppression, abuse and attack from the opposite gender for centuries. It is the story of history. And with gender ideology, it's basically men bullying women all over again. It's dogma in a dress and it's hatred in heels. Now, what's your reaction? Do Labour have a problem with women? Uh, Keir Starmer would argue that he has promoted so many women to his shadow cabinet, including the shadow chancellor, Rachel Reeves, who is a very impressive mm. politician. Uh, he would argue that there are more female MPs in the Labour Parliamentary Party. And he would argue that Labour could not be more pro-women. But what's your view? Do let me know, mark at gbnews.uk. And how do you react to the treatment of Miriam Cates there, that MP, uh, sharing a personal story about feeling threatened in a female-only space.